Got a question in the mailbag today from HamD123 about econometric notation. And he says, Sir, please teach us why the residual of regression models are sometimes denoted as an error term uh, lowercase e, and other times the Greek, Greek epsilon, and other times u, uh, and the coefficients of regressions are sometimes used as B1 or B2, and sometimes they're A1 or A2. I am totally confused. So I sympathize with you, and so let me try in just a couple of minutes to break down what's going on here. Um, with what you're seeing, some of it really means something, and some of it probably doesn't. And so uh, a lot of times, what happens is a professor or an author, I am both, I'm guilty of this, sometimes we're just lazy and we'll use different notation without really thinking about what we're doing. So some of it might just be inconsistency or laziness. But most of what you're seeing is really trying to convey something. But a lot of times the author or the professor doesn't really tell you what's going on. So the answer, some of what you're seeing is important and some of what you're seeing is probably random. Different people just use different kinds of notation. Let me give you some more specific examples here. Lesson one, whenever you're looking at the equation of a line or a relationship you're modeling, a lot of times the slope coefficients that you see, sometimes you'll see b, sometimes you'll see beta, Sometimes you'll see lowercase b, sometimes you'll see a beta hat, and sometimes you'll see alphas. What's going on here? Well, again, some of it is meaningful and some of it is more or less random. If you are talking about the theoretical model, now here what I mean is the population model that you will never see. Uh, you're no, or you will never actually observe. Uh, here what I'm thinking about is, for example, a population mean rather than a sample mean. This is what we mean when we talk about the population relationship. And the most two common ways that you'll see this represented is by a y for a dependent variable. And, and the most common uh, for economics is usually that you will use the Greek capital letter betas at least I think these are capital betas, um, for the y-intercept sitting by itself with no x multiplied by it. This is the y-intercept. And these are slopes multiplied times explanatory variable number one, explanatory variable number two, etc. So normally when you see a Greek letter like this, you're talking about the population values of these slopes. This is the theoretical model and you're going to collect data and estimate it, but you're not ever going to really know what these betas are. These are the population true values. When you collect data and estimate them, you get estimates. Now, sometimes people will, instead of using betas, they'll use alphas. Why? I don't know. Uh, I see alphas a little bit more often with uh, mathematical statisticians and betas a little bit more often with the economists, but this is not a 100% a sure rule. Um, but, but most economists are more comfortable with seeing Greek letter beta, meaning the population value, and a beta with a hat on it, beta hat, meaning an estimate. This means that we've collected data and we've estimated that this value is 3, but that's just an estimate of the true value, which could be 2 or 3 or 10 or, or 0 for all we know. So beta hats for estimates and betas for the true population value. However, a lot of people will instead use capital B's for the population values, and they will use um, lowercase b's for estimates. And now if I'm going to do this uh, for um, the population values, the capital b's, then I shouldn't have this e here. Uh, I should have the epsilon here. I apologize that my uh, Microsoft Word keeps 
pulling up these uh, menu items for me here when I don't want them. Um, however, I, I just as often see betas, not just as often, but a little less often, I'll see betas for the population values and just regular Bs for estimates rather than beta hats or rather than the, the small. What's important, I think, is that you don't just take something that you see in a publication or in your professor's notes at face value. Make sure that it's clear. Make sure to ask the person or read the details to make sure that you really understand what notation that a particular textbook or a professor is using because a lot of times these things are kind of interchanged. Not randomly, but sometimes we're inconsistent. But in general, beta, population value, or alpha sometimes, um, beta hats or lowercase b's uh, are almost always going to be used for estimates in my experience. But be careful. Now the second lesson, the second thing that you see sometimes that can, that can mess you up. Let me zoom in here so that we can see this more uh, clearly. Uh, so this lesson, you were asking about why is it that sometimes we call a residual uh, an epsilon, at least this is, this is what I think of as the Greek letter epsilon. Why sometimes an E and why sometimes a U? Now, in general, again, what you're going to see is that Greek letters normally are going to stand for a true population value. Or, in this case, for a residual, what we're meaning here with the epsilon, these are the real stochastic error terms. And so, a lot of times people would call these... Uh, epsilon i's the stochastic error term meaning this is theoretical we don't observe these error terms but we when we talk theoretically about the fact that we know that there's an error term we call them an epsilon now however when we actually estimate a model and we observe these error terms we call them ei's normally so this is an observed error term. Usually we'll call them at that point a residual. So the easy answer is that an epsilon is a stochastic theoretical error term and an E is a residual that's observed after you collect the data and after you estimate a model. Now what about this U? That you get a little bit more tricky but the best I can give you as, as far as a pattern that I see is that U is also theoretical and most of the time when I see people throwing these U's around as a residual, not a residual, but a stochastic error term. See, even I get messed up. Uh, usually you will see these U's talked about in this context. People will assume that this epsilon is what we call a classical error term. Now the term classical here comes from the classical linear regression model or the Gauss-Markov theorem where what we're talking about is that it meets all these nice assumptions about error terms that we want to see. For example that it's normally distributed and that it is uh, homoscedastic, right? That's what we want to see about our um, classical error terms. No heteroscedasticity, no serial correlation, so homoscedastic. Sometimes people will, will use this, um, when they use this epsilon, what they want you to think about is it's a nice error term. It meets all these assumptions that we want it to meet. And then if somebody throws out a U, this is not always the case, but this is where I see it most often. If somebody throws out a U, what they mean that they're talking about a theoretical error term that for some reason 
is badly behaved. And I'm using this um, badly behaved, if I can type it correctly here, um, in, in a general sense. You may be talking about an error term that has heteroscedasticity. You may be talking about an error term that's not really an error term. This error term might have something else that we know about it that's kind of weird. Let me give you two quick examples of where people use this notation U to mean it's not really an error term that's nicely behaved, but somebody has done something to the error term to make it this thing that's U that's bad. And so let me show you two examples real quickly about this. Okay, here's example number one. This is a paper by Carson and Oppenheimer from 1984 in the American Journal of Political Science called A Method of Estimating the Personal Ideology of Political Representatives. Now I'm not going to go into all the details here, but let me just fast forward to the part where I want you to show you want to show you how people use this U notation sometimes. And again, I can't guarantee that this is what what you're seeing all the time when you see this, but uh, here's what I've seen in the past. Look at this equation right here, equation number five. It says that um, when we're trying to estimate why someone votes a certain way. That's what Carson and Oppenheimer are talking about here. That why they vote a certain way is, here you see the alphas again. So look, here are alphas. This is what they're trying to say here. This is the real relationship. Um, but here are alpha hats. Um, look, everybody does it differently. But look over here at the end. Here we have this UI hat. This is saying that we observe this U and this U is not a real residual term, not a stochastic error term like what we want to see, that this U is actually something else. U is actually equal to something times the ideology of this senator, something in their head, plus EI, and and, or E1. And what he's trying to say here is this E is going to be an observed residual that's more well behaved but this U that's not really a residual U is made up of something else a residual plus something else and so normally when I see this U kind of notation they mean that U is something complicated it's not just a regular residual and hopefully they're going to go on and explain why this is a different kind of residual this U let me show you one other example now here's a paper by Luke Anselin and Barra, Florax, and Yoon, and this is an example of spatial econometrics that I'm going to show you, where we also see this U. This is a paper from 1996 in the journal Regional Science and Urban, Urban Economics, if you want to go find it for yourself. But let me show you the page where this U appears. Okay, here it is. Here's where Luke Anselin and his co-authors are setting up a spatial econometric model. What does that mean? Well this means that we have y, some dependent variable, and it might be a function of, these are some slopes here, um, this is a weight matrix of what's going on in neighboring regions. I know there's a lot of details here that we're not going to be able to go through in detail, but the value of, say, crime rates in my county is related to crime rates in other counties. That's what this WY means. Plus X times gamma. And this is saying these are some explanatory variables of my county. Plus U. Well, what's U? Well, U has something to do with the residual. Let's look at the next line where he tells us that U is equal to psi times some weights and basically these weights tell us who our neighbors are who are our neighboring counties so you my residual is equal to something times who are my neighbors times their residuals plus epsilon 
and he says that epsilon here is a nice, well-behaved stochastic error term. Epsilon is distributed normally with a normal dis distribution with a mean of zero, and this is basically saying we have homoscedasticity. And so I know that's a lot to throw into a, a quick explanation of what's going on, but normally when you see the U, people aren't going to say that you have a residual that's a U, unless they're trying to tell you that something more complicated is going on, you're not just talking about a nice, well-behaved, normally distributed, homoscedastic stochastic error term. So I hope that helped more than confuse the issue. So good luck with your studies.